All right, so you're looking at an 86 Volkswagen Golf. It's got the 1.6 uh, diesel in it. And what we're do or what I did already is I put a new ejection pump on it and uh, timing belt. Uh, it wasn't starting, and the guy thought the injection pump was bad, which is very possible. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I've, it, we, you know, we towed it. We towed it here, so I never actually heard it run. Uh, but anyway, I put a new timing belt on it and uh, put the new injection pump on it. And on these, you have to uh, time these manually by moving, rotating the pump one way or the other, the injection pump. And I've done some of the newer TDI timing belts and water pump jobs. And on those, it's electronic, and you have to use the VAD software uh, to time the pump. And on these, uh, you have to use a dial indicator and a special tool that screws into the back of the injection pump. Uh, and then it just files that plunger. And you put the engine on top dead center. And uh, anyway, rotate it back. I'm going to go through the process of doing that uh, real quick. And I'll kind of show you what's going on with the special tools and all that stuff. Uh, and we'll prime this too. This is a brand new pump, so it's not primed. And there's a way to prime these older uh, Volkswagens. Uh, if if you don't prime it, it'll never suck the fuel out of the tank. And uh, this that pretty much applies if you have a good injection pump and you run out of fuel or something. Uh, you also need to prime it. So. Anyway, I'll go through that real quick, and uh, we'll time this pump in, and then we'll uh, see if it starts. All right, so this is the kit that I usually use on the newer t uh, TDIs. It's an Audi v VW TDI, and uh, I've had this kit about five years, I guess. Uh, I don't usually work on diesels, but the guy that I do this for is a good friend of mine, and uh, he, for whatever reason, likes these diesels, so I end up working on them all the time. And this kit comes with pretty much everything you need for a newer TDI. It's got the camshaft locking tool. Uh, this is what locks the injection pump so it doesn't move when you're doing the timing chain. You have the tool here to, to rotate the uh, tensioner for the belt. And then you have uh, various other tools, you know, depending on what you're doing with it. Camshaft uh, and crankshaft lockers and stuff. So this, this kit actually has... Okay, this will lock in the older pumps so they won't move when you're changing the timing belt. But this and this here is the only two things that work with the older TDI diesels. Uh, this doesn't come with the dial indicator or the tool to uh, screw into the back of the pump to time it. So, which I mean, this doesn't time the new ones either because you need the VAT software to time it. But, uh, Anyway, I guess you could say half of these tools work for the older style D, uh, TDIs, but then uh, as far as timing the pump, there's nothing in here that will help you time the pump uh, for the older ones. So this is that kit. And then uh, this is the kit to time the pump. We got it on Amazon. It's the e quick uh, insist on quality kit. I'll see if I can put a link on it uh, below if you're working on the older diesels. And this has the camshaft locker in it. And it does have some of the newer tools for like the, you know, it has this one, which is the one we're working on to lock it. And then it has different sizes for the back. This is your injection pump right here. This is the old one that came off the car. And this is the front of it where your uh, cam, where the, uh, sprocket goes and then uh, in the back here is a 12 millimeter bolt that comes that screws out and that's where you put your uh, timing uh, tools in to time it so I'll kind of go over the car and show you this is the old pump here and uh, you use a combination I already got the dial indicator over there so that's why you don't see it in the kit but it does come with the kit and it comes with different size uh, rods to put in there so I got it all set up over there already. So it's not in this. It's it comes with this kit, but it's not in the box right now. So anyway, that's the tools you're going to need if you uh, want to time your older VW TDI diesel 1.6. This is a non-turbo engine. So these are the tools you would need for that. And then uh, we'll go.
All right, so here's a new injection pump already installed, uh, new tying belts installed already. Now, to prime these pumps, uh, you want to take this off. This is your return line here. One goes to, uh, to the return line, then one's for the injectors. Now, you can just take this nut off, and this has uh, brass fittings in it to keep it from leaking. Uh, I just go ahead and... Um, I just went ahead and took the line off. It's just one, uh, you know, one clamp. And then this line here doesn't have anything holding it on. It just pushes on and off. So I just, I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew this from the housing itself and uh, put the fuel directly down to that hole. Now you can take this off first, move this out of the way, then take this off, or get something small to go down to this. But uh, for this car, it's just easier to pull this off and then unscrew this clamp and move it out of the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a wrench, unscrew this out. This is on top of your injection pump. So return. And uh, once we unscrew this, we'll have a hole there. And we'll just dump uh, diesel fuel down in that until it fools, until it's fill, uh, all the way to the top. And that'll prime this. If you don't do that, uh, this thing will take forever to start. You'll probably go through several batteries. And it's just almost impossible to, to uh, for this thing to, to pull fuel when they're empty. Um, I've had a little bit of experience with that here in the shop. Uh, with working on the other TBIs and stuff, the Volkswagen diesel. So, I, in my opinion, this is probably the easiest, uh, best way to do it. Um, and that calls for you if you run out of fuel. You're not like obviously here we change the entire injection pump, but even if you just ran out of fuel or something, uh, this is the easiest way to prime it. So we're just going to unscrew this and then we'll fill this uh, up with. All right. So here's that fitting I took off. It does have a brass washer on it. So you don't want to lose that. That's what seals it to the pump. And you can see here, I fill it all the way to the top with uh, diesel fuel. It takes about, uh, I don't know, I would say a cup, cup and a half, maybe somewhere around there, to uh, fill it up. So once it's filled up, you can go ahead and screw that back in and uh, give it a whirl. Now, we haven't timed this pump yet, so I'm not going to try to start it yet. I just wanted to show you how to prime it first. And uh, if, you're, if you're changing the pump or you run out of fuel or something like that. <clears throat> uh, but you can see here, I got the timing tools in. I have that shaft that co that, that's basically an adapter that screws into the housing here. And then we have the dial indicator uh, all set up, or I have it kind of set up. Uh, so now we're gonna, I'm going to put this back together, and then we'll get this engine on uh, top dead center. And... Uh, We'll set this gauge up and go, go about timing the pump on it so that the injectors fire off when they're supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to put this uh, back in and get it back on top dead center. And then uh, I'll kind of show you how to time the pump from there. Alright, so you want to uh, have the engine on top dead center. If you're not familiar with the Volkswagen, uh, you pull the plug out on the back here on the transmission. And you turn the crankshaft until the uh, zero and the little dash lines up at the middle of this hole here. Um, and your camshaft, if you're at top dead center, uh, the, the number one cylinder should not be any, they, the lobe should not be touching the uh, valves. Both of them should be closed. This one faces more towards you, the other one faces more towards the back. And of course you can always line it up with your uh, ejection pump mark on the back of the cover and on the sprocket here. So it's at top dead center. So what you want to do is screw in your adapter for your pump. You take out that 12 millimeter bolt at the, at the back of the pump and you screw in your adapter to it. And that bolt is in between all the hard lines for your fuel injector. And you just take a 12 millimeter, unscrew it, and then you screw in your adapter here for your uh, dial indicator. Screw that in, and then you put the dial indicator until the, the needle just starts to move. And then you're going to put 2 millimeters of preload on this dial indicator. So you're just going to press this dial indicator inward until you read 2 millimeters of preload. And once you get to there, go ahead and tighten the screw here. And then we'll move the engine counterclockwise. Uh, this stupid camera's not focusing on that dial indicator at all. Uh, anyway, you'll move the engine counterclockwise by hand. After you get the two millimeters of preload on this, the needle should move and when it stops moving, you stop right there and you zero out the gauge 
and then we'll turn it back to top dead center and see what the uh, what the lift is on this pump. So uh, get it in, put two millimeters of preload on this, and then we'll bar the engine over by hand uh, counterclockwise until this needle stops. Once it stops, wherever it stops, we'll zero it out, and then we'll move it back to top dead center. All right, so I don't think this uh, camera is really focusing very well on this gauge here. Uh, but the needle was way over here, and I pulled, I rotated the engine counterclockwise, so you're going to want to put a 19 millimeter socket on your crank bolt and rotate it uh, towards the back. Well, you're going to rotate it up towards your alternator counterclockwise. The needle was over here, and it moved over here. So once it gets to wherever it stops, uh, it'll go to a point where it just stops moving. So just rotate it over slowly till it stops, and then turn it back the other way till it just starts to move, and then that will be where you want to zero your gauge out at. So right now I got the gauge zeroed out uh, where it stopped. So now we're going to rotate it back clockwise to top dead center, and what I do is just watch the uh, the notch on the injection pump line up with the cover, and that should put you very close to top dead center, and then whatever this needle reads. Uh, we'll see what the lift is on this pump, and then we'll compare it to what it's supposed to be and uh, adjust it if we have to. So now uh, it's zeroed out. It, we counterclockwise till it stopped. We zeroed it out. Now I'm going to rotate the engine back over clockwise to top dead center, and we'll see what. All right, so I don't know if you can read that. Probably not. Uh, but anyway, it's at top dead center again, and we're at about 45 on the uh, guy, dial here. And according to the specs, it's supposed to be 93 to 97 on this year injection pump. Um, so we got to turn this. Uh, you're going to loosen your injection pump up. You got the two uh, bolts at top and then one in the bottom. And then there's one in the back here. And we're going to rotate this pump until we read uh, between 93 and 97 on this gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this pump up. It's already kind of loose. And uh, we'll rotate this. All right, so I'll kind of go over the, the bolts that you have to loosen to do, do this injection pump. You have one right here uh, on this side, and then you got one on the inside, and I use a ratcheting open end for that one. And then you have one in the front here that's a nut, and that one you have to go in uh, the sprocket hole right here, 13 millimeter, loosen that one. And then uh, this one doesn't have it right now, but it will. There's one in the back uh, underneath these lines that holds a bracket. Since I just put this injection pump on, I haven't put everything back together yet. Uh, that one's not on there. So uh, my, my pump was retarded. Uh, it was at 45 or whatever. So I needed to advance it. So I took the pump and loosened it and rotated it towards the back of the car. And you can see there, well, I don't know if you can see this camera sucks, but I'm at 95. It's supposed to be at 93 to 97. So all you do is just rotate your pump until this gauge goes to where you want it to meet. And like I said, the book says 93 and 97, so I'm at 95, I'm right in the middle of that spec. So that's all you have to do. Now all we got to do is remove that gauge, put that plug back in, and then i got to put the radiator hose on, a few other things, and then we'll see if this thing starts. Now it might be a little bit hard to start at first just because, uh, you know, we, gotta, we, we had to prime that pump, and there's probably not fuel to the injectors yet and all that, but uh, it should start now. Everything's in time. It has a new timing belt and uh, got the new injection pump so I'm just gonna go ahead and put like I said I'm still kinda in the middle of the timing belt job I'm gonna go ahead and put the operator hose back on and that plug and then we'll just fire it off I don't really have the valve cover on yet so I don't want to run it very long but uh, uh, we'll, we'll fire it off and see if it starts or I might just wait and get the valve cover on so I don't uh, make a big mess I'll probably do that so anyway let me do all that, and then we'll pick this video back up and see if this thing even runs. I'm sure it will, but uh, that's the basic premise on how to time the injection pump on these cars. Now, if you have any questions, I know it's kind of you might want to watch this a couple times. Wish I could have actually shown you uh, adjusting the needle and stuff, but it's kind of hard to do if I'm by myself here. But uh, if you have any questions about it, just drop me a message, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put some of the stuff back. All right, just to go over this one more time, uh, with this pump off the car, it's a little easier for me to show you. 
So again, you're going to take this plug out. It's 12 millimeter. Uh, it's pretty long. You'll pull that out of the pump. This is the hole that you put your tool into. Now, the tool that we got, we I used the longer uh, the longer adapter here. There's three different adapters, and they will all screw in there. Uh, but this one, uh, I can set it up to where I need to set it up for with this particular pump. So I used the long uh, shaft here for the dial indicator. This comes with the kit, and they just screw on and screw off. There's different sizes. There's uh, two different size lengths of these, and then one uh, stubby one. So anyway, I use this. So what you do is you just screw this into the hole, the back of the pump, and get it down flush. And then you'll have your engine at top dead center. Like, like we discussed before and we'll put this in now this is going to be longer if you just jam this all the way in there uh, you're going to move your needle so what you want to do is put this in and you put it in uh, until the needle just starts to move all right see there it just moved so just back it off till about right where it starts to move and that's where you're going to uh, start at you know so don't just jam it all the way in there because that will move the needle all the way up and then you won't have any movement now depending on your injection pump you're going to have to uh, put some preload on this and uh, on the particular one we're working on it was two millimeters so you'll just push this down till you get the two millimeters which is basically two rotations on this almost and then you'll tighten your uh, You'll tighten it down, and uh, that'll hold that there. And then you're going to move the engine counterclockwise. Take your uh, crankshaft bolt and 19 millimeter, and move the engine counterclockwise until this this needle will go backwards this way, and it'll stop somewhere. And once it stops somewhere, that's where you're going to zero it out. So you'll loosen this up, move it to zero, and then that'll be your base point. Uh, of where where you want to zero it then you're going to move the engine back clockwise to top dead center and that'll give you your measurement of where your lift pumps at so on mine it was at uh, I think 45 so it ended up you know you'll it'll go back to here you'll zero it and then uh, you go back to top dead center and it's only about a quarter of a turn on the engine before this stops so don't go cranking on it real far uh, just go real slow and this needle will follow the pump lift pump and once it bottoms out it'll stop moving and that's when you stop and it should only be maybe five six teeth off on your injection pump gear from the plate mark so maybe a quarter turn maybe less once you get to there you want to go you zero this out go back clockwise and wherever that needle stops is where your lift pumps at so mine stopped at 45 and according to Shopkey Pro, it's supposed to be between 93 and 97. So you're going to loosen this pump up, like I showed you, and you're going to rotate the pump towards the engine, towards the valve cover, and that'll advance it to, uh, you know, and then you just rotate it till you get to where you need to be. Mine was, I put mine at 95, which just happens to be this black mark right here. And then you tighten it down, you hold it, tighten it down, and then your lift pump should be timed in with your injectors and all that good stuff. So that's kind of like, uh, I just wanted to show you this off the bench. a little bit easier to see than being on the car. And I kind of wish I would have had somebody to help me film this particular video just because I could have shown the medial movement and all that. But uh, again, if you have any questions about it, you can always uh, message me. And I'll put up some of the specifications on the screen at certain points so that you can see uh, for yourself what I'm talking about. So that's uh, that. And I went ahead and cranked the car over a couple times and it kind of sputtered. So I got a feeling it's about ready to start. I went ahead and put the valve cover and all that good stuff back on. So uh, it's ready to, to run. So we'll go over and make sure it runs and then uh, we'll see. We'll see. And this is kind of the kit all back together. Uh, you know, it has some of the, the holding tools that you need if you're going to do a timing belt. We mainly got this for the timing of the uh, injection pump. It has different uh, set, different uh, size 
for the back of the pump. I'm not sure if different years are different. I'm not. A, I'll never claim to be a Volkswagen diesel expert, uh, but I've done enough timing belts and water pumps on them to know a little bit about them. And uh, I'm assuming these different sizes here are just for uh, different types of pumps that they they may use. Uh, like I said, this is an 86, and I found this is the one that worked the best for us or for me with this adapter, the long adapter. And uh, it does have somewhere oh, right here. It has a smaller, a smaller adapter, I guess, for uh, the other sizes. I'll go ahead and put a link to this. Uh, in the description, in case you need it or want to get it, you're probably going to need this if you're going to do a time, if you're going to do your injection timing. So I'll, I'll put a link to this. I think this kit was about 50 bucks. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'll put a link to it. And uh, that way, if you're going to do this job yourself, uh, you'll have the kit there to time it right. And so anyway, we'll go over to the car and see if this thing starts. All right, so I got the valve cover on and. Uh, Cool it back in it, all the good stuff you need to uh, start it back up. Got the alternator belt on and what's left of the air box. And uh, like I said before, I had cranked over a couple times uh, before it actually started. And I found uh, that the fuel uh, shutoff solenoid was disconnected. The uh, connector fell apart. And I don't know where that's at now. I had it somewhere, but uh, that's kind of what you deal with when you deal with old cars like this. Uh, what is this, like 35 years old? So, uh, yeah, that's what you deal with. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see if it starts now. Uh, like I said, we got it primed, we got it timed, the belt's on, everything's good. It should be ready to almost kick out of here. So, we'll see if it starts. Through two or three batteries, try to start them. Uh, started pretty easy. Now this thing hasn't been running. I think uh, probably at least six months. Uh, I think the injection pump went out on it, and he fiddled around with it for a while, and uh, just didn't. It's been. I think it's been sitting a long time. So it started up pretty good for sitting. Uh, Seems like it's idling a little bit high, but like I said, it's been sitting. So well, I'll go ahead and let it run and make sure there's no leaks anywhere, and. Uh, let it burn off some of the oil that's been sitting on it and all that good stuff. But that's pretty much it on uh, timing your injection pump and uh, priming your system on these Volkswagen, the older Volkswagens. Uh, hopefully you understood that. I tried to, you know, it would have been better if I had someone else here to film the actual timing of it on the car where you could see the needle. Uh, but I, I'm by myself, so I can only show what I can show. But hopefully you get an idea of it. If you have any questions, uh, just shoot me a message. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. I don't pretend to be a Volkswagen diesel expert, uh, you know, but I do. Uh, I've done some tire belts, water pumps, stuff like that, injection pump on these. I've messed with the VAD software a little bit on the newer ones, and uh, so I know a little bit about them. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to try to say I'm an expert. I work on mainly. American and foreign or uh, Asian cars. I'm not a big European guy just because we don't. I don't see him a lot in this area. Uh, but this guy is one of my close friends, and he wants me to work on him, so I do. He's got a couple of them. So uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Now this is a non-turbo engine. I don't know if I uh, mentioned that. Uh, there's probably different procedures depending on the engine, but this is the uh, non-turbo 1.6 and the 86 Golf. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I see you on the next one. Uh, have a good day. God bless.